working at nighttime. Easy to do while watching all the season finales or NHL playoffs that are on right now. Registered dietitian Andrea Hallwagner joining us this morning to talk about the snacking mistakes we are making and some great solutions. And I have to say right out of the gates, you look great this morning. Coordinated yes, outfit. I just mean, I called and, you know, we, we planned this. Bring some brightness <laughs> into this dreary day. This is really common and, and we, we got talking about this because we're all watching NHL playoffs. It's after supper, but then you decide you're kind of hungry and then you get into that mindless I call it mindless, mindless eating, eating. Absolutely. and a lot of calories can be consumed sure. <laughs> in the process. So let's walk through some of the uh, mistakes we're making and, and one of the ones you point out, starve now, binge later mindset. Men and women do this? Yes, and I would even say men maybe even more so than, hmm. than females. It's getting busy in your work day and sometimes coming home um, knowing that you're going to be watching playoffs or in the case of students, knowing that you're going to be studying and not having planned the day ahead and then it becomes almost a, a permission to eat whatever you want because you didn't really eat that much during the yeah. day. And so then it's when hard you're to keep that wrangled in. And I guess depending on what you're snacking on, those, the calorie consumption can become massive but without knowing it. Absolutely. Failing to manage the environment, what do you mean by that? Failing to manage the environment is a common thing that we see where people will stock their cupboards full of junk foods and then they'll wonder, well, why can I not stop eating potato chips? So it's mm -hmm. common sense here. What, what food psychology um, research has shown is that when we have more, we eat more. Mm -hmm. So that applies to when you have more vegetables in your house, you will naturally start to eat more of them because that's what's front and center in your fridge or the fruit bowl that's front and center on your counter. But you know, for someone like myself, the chocoholic dietitian, if I stocked my pantries full of chocolate, guess what? I'm going to eat way more chocolate than I probably need to. I buy the chocolate and chips and think it's for the kids or <laughs> the husband, but sure. I know I'll ultimately <laughs> find it in the end. Uh, using food to stuff and starve uncomfortable emotion. These are these emotional eaters, and a lot of us are eaters like that. You know, when we eat for so many reasons, uh, you know, I wouldn't even have a career if we only ate for nutritional, um, physical hunger. Mm -hmm. No one would have health issues or physical, um, you know, problems with their weight. So it's okay to sometimes eat when we're sad or mad or because we're celebrating or we're watching the playoffs or because we're bored. It's when that becomes our go-to coping that, of course, we're going to run into some trouble. So ask yourself some questions. I know you work with, uh, as you say, with your clients about walking through this and, and it's really about, uh, you know, trying to verbalize what you're going through. What is eating me? What am I stuffing? Mm -hmm. What uncomfortable emotion am I stuffing? And a lot of times people say, well, I kind of know why I'm eating. Um, but dive into that a little bit further because the clients of ours that are able to really um, confidently go into that place, which is very uncomfortable, um, and really dive into, well, I know I'm eating because I'm stressed out. Well, what specifically, where did it all start? And what maybe would be a healthier way that I can comfort myself or nourish myself that may not be just stuffing that emotion through food? We asked you for some suggestions and you are the master at this because you, you sent us, I think, 45 suggestions. <laughs> uh, we will have to post them because they're excellent. <laughs> but uh, walk us through what you've got here. A, a lot of this is, it's satiating, so it'll fill you up, but it's also fairly healthy. <laughs> what I wanted to showcase here was something that was a little bit more pretty and something maybe that um, wouldn't be considered something you would prepare in the evening because often people just grab a bag of whatever or a box of yeah. crackers and they sit down at the couch and what I'd love you to do is present it in a little bit more of an attractive way because hey anything in a martini glass always looks appetizing and cool Very pretty, Andrea. Um, and if you put a little bit of, of time into plating things in an attractive way food is always more satisfying I never thought of something like this for an e a late night snack, but why not? Strangely enough, this is a, a common one my husband would be seen eating. Um, he'd probably be quite embarrassed. I'm telling people that he eats often cucumbers and tomatoes and things as a snack, but he's looking for something kind of crunchy. He's more of a savory kind of guy. Yeah, so yeah. if there's any ability to have a little bit of cheese or, or again, get the vegetables in then uh, bonus. Pistachios, fruit, uh, fruit always a good option. Again, you got to have the fruit in the fridge. You got it. If you're going to go to it when you're uh, tired and hungry. And, and notice I didn't put the one kilo bag of nuts on the table because this yeah. is not going to work out well. Plate the portion that you're planning on, on eating and just bring that amount to the couch when you're watching TV. All right. All great advice. And once again, there's lots of great uh, snacking options that Andrea has given them. And for more information, you can go find Andrea at www.healthstandnutrition.com. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. We are uh, going to head for a break. When we come back, Justin Bieber, yeah, he just can't seem to catch a break these days. Why the pop